Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dev here. And in this video today, I'm going to show you how we can create custom window and door compositions in Revit using curtain walls so they're easy to edit, but how we can make them look correct graphically in plan and section just so our architectural drawings are nice and clean. So as you can see here, this is a curtain wall, but the panels look exactly like how a window family would look. So the main reason why I'm making this video is because editing or creating these custom compositions is such a fundamental part of design, whether you're a beginner or a student. Um, this really does influence a lot of your design, but the windows that Autodesk provide, they're not really the easiest thing to edit. They have a lot of detail in them, but for early stage work or if you're a student, they're quite hard to edit. They're not the most intuitive and we want to be able to create something that's custom. So we want the flexibility of a curtain wall, but we want them to look correct. And I just wanted you guys to know that I've actually created a Discord community. It can be a place for us to chill while we do some Revit work or architecture work. Over there, I'm also going to be giving out some sample scripts that I'm working on, some sample files. Uh, for example, right now, say if you don't have time to follow this tutorial and you're on a deadline, over there, I'm giving this project file and the family that I'm using over there in the Discord channel. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys can join. However, if you do end up finding this video helpful or you end up downloading the file, I'd appreciate it if you can leave a like on this video. And yeah, let's get back into it. Cheers, guys. Cool, so we're on our new project. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Wall, Architectural, and then I'm going to choose the Curtain Wall Exterior Glazing. I'm just going to draw a line here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new type. This type that I'm going to create, I'm going to call it something like exterior window and this type will now be the base. So whenever we want to create a custom window composition and we want to have the correct, you know, architectural graphics, as I've shown you before, we're now going to use this because it's going to set the base for everything for going forward. I'm just going to hit OK and I'm just going to put something like the spacing for my project 1000 and 2100 for the spacing. You can obviously adjust this how you need. These vertical mullions or the mullions that we're going to put are going to be the frame of the win windows. I'm just going to do something like the 50 and 151 here um, where I can show you how to edit this afterwards. I know this is quite thick for now, but we can easily edit it later on. So I'm just going to do this. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Great. Now I'm going to hit OK. Now what I want to do is let me just extend this here and oh, let's make it go up to level one. Now what I want to do is I want to have a reference, right? We want to see what our standard window would look like. So I'm just going to go to wall, architectural, and I'm going to choose something like this one here. Let's just set it to course so our graphics look nice and let's just load in a standard Revit window. As you can see here, this when we whenever we load in a wall to a, whenever we load in a window and we place it on a wall it cuts it straight away if i create this wall here again and i create similar here by default this curtain wall isn't cutting the wall if i want to make it cut by instance for this case i have to go to modify i have to place to click on the cut tool click on the wall and then click on the curtain wall how about if we want it to happen by default what I want to do is then is then click on this type, edit it and do automatically embed. So this means whenever I go to the wall and I do create a similar and I draw it again, it's going to cut the wall for us by default, just like if we were facing a window. Now what we want to do is we want to fix these mullions here. No, sorry, we want, we want to fix the panel here just so it looks like how a window would look. So I'm just going to delete this here for now. There we go. And if I tab into the curtain wall so I can select the panel, you can see here it says edit in place. This means it's a system family. This is no use to us. We want an actual Revit loadable family that we can edit. And to do that, I'm just going to hit cancel model. I'm just going to go to the insert tab, load Autodesk family. And now I'm going to go to curtain wall panels. And we want to load in curtain panels glaze. I'm going to hit load. There we go. And I'm just going to click on this curtain wall type again, edit type, and I'm going to make the curtain panel the one that we've just loaded in, which is a curtain panel glazed, 25 mil thickness. Then hit OK. There we go, we can see it's had a small change. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab into the curtain wall panel, click edit family. And here we're now able to override what it's gonna look like in plan. So here we have the 3D panel. And if I expand my views here, I have how it's gonna look in a floor plan and in elevation. If I click on this baseline, which is how it's gonna look in the floor plan, if I click on this element here, you can see it's going to highlight everything and it's going to say glass extrusion. If I hit visibility settings, I can turn it off in plan. We don't really want to see this panel in plan. We want to override what the graphic settings are for it. So I'm going to hit OK. And here you see we've had no settings update, right? 
This is because whether something's in the family environment or not, whether it's turned on or off, we're able to see everything just because it makes it easier, easier for us when we're editing our family. If I want to see how it will look like in a project, I just go down here to preview visibility and I'm going to hit preview visibility on. As you can see, the panel's turned off. For some reason, Autodesk have left a symbolic line here for um, the panel representation and it's on the edge of the panel. I don't like that personally. I prefer if it was in the center of the panel and that's what we're going to do. So first, I'm going to do preview visibility off so we can see everything again in our project. And that's going to, un sorry, I'm just going to click on the move tool and then I'm going to move this here. I don't have to move it to the center yet. We're going to constrain it. So I'm just going to hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this align dimension tool select one edge of the panel, the line that we have, and the other edge, go to the left, left click, and hit this EQ sign. This is now going to mean that this line is going to be constrained to the center of the panel. No matter how thick we make the panel, whether we increase the width or make it smaller, this line is now going to be in the center of it, right? One important thing to note up here is that the subcategory of this line is set to glass. We can have curtain panel, hidden lines, invisible lines, and glass. I need you to remember that for when we go back into the project. So. Now that we've got this, what I'm going to do is, if I go preview visibility on, you can see our curtain panel in 3D, if I go preview visibility on here, it's going to be 3D in the actual project environment, but in plan view, it's going to be represented by one line. So if I hit load into project and I just hit override, you can see that we've now actually overridden what the panel is going to be. I'm just going to undo this when I hit load family because what I want to do is I actually want to save this as another family. The reason why I want to save this as another family is because it's just personal preference. But whenever I edit a default family, something that I've loaded in from Autodesk and I know I'm changing the settings, I'd rather save it and load it in so I have a copy of the original. I'm just going to hit save. There we go. I already have this file. I'm just going to hit yes. Load into project. And here I'm just going to hit edit type. And now I'm going to go back to the curtain panel and I'm going to choose the one that I've saved as a different name and load it in, the one that has DC at the end for dev creates. I'm going to hit that and hit OK. And there we go. If I tab into this panel now, we can see it's represented by one line, right? Here though, if I go, if I want to center this line, if I go to edit type, we can see that our panel has a thickness of 25, but it's got an offset of 63.5 by default. I'm not sure why it's that value by default, something Autos has given. But if I want it to be centered, I want this thickness to, I want the offset to be half of the thickness, which is going to be 12.5. And here we can see our curtain panel, which is glass, ends up looking like a window. Maybe now I want to actually override the um, mullions. They are quite thick, right? So I can either create a new mullion at the bottom, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to rename the one that I have here. And I'm just going to override the settings I have. So instead of 150, I'm going to make 100 for the name. And the thickness here, instead of 150, let's make it 100. There we go. That's more like a window, right? Similar or close enough. Now, if I turn off thin lines here, you can see that the actual line thickness of this panel is quite big. This isn't how like a window would look in terms of when we cut it. It's meant to be three clean lines. If I go VG on my keyboard, or if you press VV, you're going to get the visibility graphics of the view. If I go to curtain panels here, and if I expand this, we can now see the subcategories. Remember before when I said to remember the line, this line that we set, wasn't set to curtain panel or hidden lines, it was set to glass. And right now we're cutting this glass. So if I go to override and I want this line rate to be one and I hit okay and I hit apply, there we go, we've overridden the line weight of this glass for this panel. And we now have three distinct lines and it's looking a lot more like a window, right? One thing I wanna do now is if I go to view and I go to section and I cut through here, and then if I go right click and I hit go to view, you can see again here, if I turn on thin lines, we still have two lines here. We haven't overridden the um, panel graphics in section. We've only done it for plan. So we need to make sure we do this as well. So if I go to edit family and if I make sure previous visibility is off in plan and if I go to left or right, we don't really have sections in families by default. Um, if I go to my 3D view here and I see my um, view cube, we have the front and the back. I don't really need to override this because it appears 2D there. But if I go to right or left, it's similar to how a section would be. So right or left in this case, if I go to my left view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the panel, visibility settings. I'm going to turn it off for left and right. There we go. 
And now what I want to do is I want to hit annotate and I want to go to my symbolic line, pick a plane, pick tab if you can't if you can't actually see the um, plane that you want and you only see an edge, click on that and press tab. There you go until all four sides are done. And now what we want to do is we want to create a line somewhere so it doesn't even have to be in the center. Like I said, we're going to align it afterwards. So I'm going to align it from there to there. Fantastic. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the align dimension tool again. One edge of the panel, other edge, other, the line that we created, other edge of the panel, go up, click, click on the dimension, press the EQ button. There we go. And now we want our subcategory to be glass, remember, not curtain panels, because then it's going to set the graphic override for the entire panel. We want it to be glass, cut, there we go. And remember how I said we want our offset to be um, always half the thickness in this case. I can, if I create a new panel and if I make this 50 mil thickness, I'm going to have to then change the offset. We can use a formula to make this easier for us. So in the formula, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to thickness. I'm just going to reference the thickness and then I'm going to divide it by two. Now I can't override offset. It's always going to be half of the thickness. So whenever I edit thickness, if I make this 50 or 100, it's always going to be in the center for us because it's going to update the value. So if I hit OK, and then I load this into my project and override. There we go. And this is one reason why I recommended saving this as a new family name because we've obviously put in formulas to the default family and we've edited some of the graphics. Uh, I think because we've actually made quite a few changes, I think it's deserved that it's actually got its new name instead of just loading it in by default. Great, so now this looks correct in section as well. And like I said, in 3D, this is still a solid like panel that's got 25 mil thickness. Okay, so what happens if we want to now play with the um, composition of this stuff, right? So if I go here, let me just delete this section for now. That's fine. If I go here and I create a new one in the wall, as I said before, it's now going to cut the wall, which is great. If I go here, let's say if I want one of this, um, these panels to be a door. So all I have to do is I just have to press tab, go to the panel, unpin it. And then if I go here, I don't actually have a door loaded in. I can only put this panel here that I've done as another wall or a curtain panel. So Autodesk actually gave us some pretty decent families. So if I go to insert, load Autodesk family, and I go to curtain wall panel still, and if I click on this door here and I hit load, there we go. If I tap into it now and I click uh, and override this one to be glass, there we go. And now I can just flip this here and it's now a door. As I mentioned before, this mullion here is represented, well, these lines here represent a mullion, right? If I go to my 3D view and I go to my door, this mullion is still there. I need to delete it so, one, it doesn't look weird in 3D or elevation, but so it looks, so it looks correct in plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unpin this mullion here and delete it from the grid. Now, if I go back to my floor pan view, there we go, it looks correct. Now, as I've shown you before in the example, what happens if I want this to be a solid panel? Same as before, if I don't have the family loaded in, I just need to go to insert, load Autodesk family, curtain wall panels. I'm going to choose a curtain panel solid, load, here we go, unpin this one because we want to override it for this instance. And then I want to choose curtain panel solid. And like I said, by default, some of these values are odd. So if I go here to edit type, the offset is manual from the thickness. So the thickness is 100, but offset is um, 125 we need it to be half of the thickness if we want it to be in the center so i'm just going to do offset as 50. there we go and now if i press my 3d view and i go here here we have our custom composition so maybe if i want this to be unconnected and i go to 2100 here oh sorry not 2100 let's do 2400 there we go we've got this thing here and if i want to override what these panels are i can just tab into them from my 3d view here here and here, unpin them and set them to solid. One thing to note, oh, and I've missed this one. Unpin and set it to solid. One thing to note is that because this isn't a family, this is instant space. If I want to make this change on other levels, so if I just do copy and I do paste align to selected view and I paste this to level one, if I change this curtain wall here and let's say I make this grid here, if I tab it and I unpin the grid, if I make this one 1000, we can see the one on the top hasn't changed. This is because 
it's an actual unique wall it's not a window one workaround for this is you can actually group your custom you can actually group your custom curtain wall composition so that whenever you update um, this composition it will update in other ones because that's how groups work right this is like a workaround for how a family would be so if I go here and I delete this and if I go here and I do create group and I do curtain wall composition 01 there we go if I now get this group and I copy it and I paste it to level 1 there we go hit OK now if I edit this group and I press tab and let's say I made this one 1000 again here we go it's edited almost like it's a family of course this isn't as stable as a family and it might give you some problems but for early stage work or if you're a beginner in Revit or you're a student this is definitely the way to go about creating these custom um, window compositions like I said I know this is going to be something that's going to uh, changed a lot for your design and I think it's a bit unrealistic for Revit beginners to start creating their own window and door families within the family environment within the family editor environment but this is definitely a good um, workaround and yeah that's it for this video if you guys did find this helpful I would really appreciate if you leave a like uh, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed take care guys cheers